نحمد و نصلی علی رسول الکریم اما بعد اما بعد فاوز باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ڈیر سسٹرس الحمد للہ ٹری از آر ہنڈرتھ لیسن آف دا قرآن قرآن دیٹ وی ہیو بین اسٹڈینگ ماشاء اللہ سو لیٹس بگن امیڈیٹلی ود آر ریکیپ سو لاسٹ ویک الحمد للہ وی اسٹڈیڈ سورہ الحاشر So we'll uh, begin um, uh, with the dua of uh, Moses. Rabbi Shrakli Sadri Vesir Li Amri Wakhlu Lukdatam Min Lisani Yafqahu Qawli Rabbi Zidni Ilma Allahumma Fatihni Fil Deen So what did we study in Surah um, Al-Hashir last week? We studied that everything in the sky and everything in the earth is praising and glorifying Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And so that means that every single thing, small or large, and most things are larger than us as mere little human beings what are they doing they are praising allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so what is our role our role is to praise allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well so we should busy ourselves with the speech alhamdulillah subhanallah alhamdulillah allahu akbar la ilaha illallah allahu akbar all these little um, uh, the speech we should be doing reciting continuously throughout so to say subhanallah to say alhamdulillah it doesn't take much time it doesn't even take a few seconds but we should make this part of our life even though it doesn't take much time but we still find that we don't do it reason we don't do it is because it just does not come to mind it's while we're watching you know tv there's we're always uh, up and about doing this doing the other while we're traveling or while we're um, um maybe on a journey on a train in a car anything at all that we are doing we can still say subhanallah alhamdulillah allah akbar we can say other at the gods as well subhanallah wa bihamdihi subhanallah alazim so if every single thing is glorifying allah then what do you think we should be doing we should be doing exactly the same and we should remind ourselves we should keep reminding ourselves to do the same and then we learned that your homes and your wealth and everything that we seem to think will protect us it cannot protect us and the particular thing that was mentioned in this surah was the houses was the very you know big fortresses that people had to actually um uh, made for themselves that they did you know you cannot survive in those places if you have if you disobey allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so you should uh, uh, obey allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you might think that this is going to save you and that is going to save you but nothing will save you the only thing that will save you is uh, your obedience to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala your religion your obeying your praising allah your uh, Um, upholding the pillars of islam so if you leave the deen then you end up losing everything you end up losing the dunya and the deen but if you choose the deen then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will throw in the dunya free of charge like they say buy one get one free so if you get the uh, uh, go for the deen the dunya will come in anyway then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised the ansar so the ansars were the people that welcomed the muhajirun um into their homes and what did they do you know what were their qualities why did allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praise them because the people that came from um uh, makkah the um, immigrants the ansar they um gave them their wealth they gave them half of their wealth they gave them um, you know if they had extra homes they gave them a house to live in they gave them whatever they had which was extra they gave it to them and then we had the scenario of even when they needed something they felt that their need the need of their brother or their sister was far greater so they would give them what, what whatever they had and then we had the fantastic um the hadith about a um ansari man who took a guest home and the, his wife he asked his wife that what we you know what are we what have we got um uh, food wise and she said nothing the only thing we've got is the children the food that i'm cooking for the children we have you know nothing spare so what he said is that put the children to sleep and me and you we can pretend that we are eating with this guest but give that food to the guest and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned them in the quran so that this beautiful deed that they did that they were given um, a mention so 
And then um, we went on to learn this beautiful dua that, Oh Allah, forgive us and our brothers who have preceded us in faith and put not any resentment in our hearts toward those who have believed our Lord. Indeed, you are kind and merciful. So this dua we should make as istighfar. We should make this dua as often as we can. That, Oh Allah, forgive us, because obviously we want forgiveness for ourselves. And then forgive the believers. So with the believers, how many believers are there? We, you know, we can't even count the number of believers that there are. So ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you and to forgive the believers. And it's a comprehensive dua. It has everything in it that give, forgive us and the believers. And don't put any hatred in, uh, into our hearts. So it's a fantastic dua and I think we should all commit it to memory. And we learned about the hypocrites. They would um, side with the Jews. And what they would say is, you know, don't worry. We will look after you. Nobody can touch you. Here we are. We're here to protect you. You know, the Muslims can't do anything for you. If they come to fight you, you tell us. We'll bring our friends and, you know, um, uh, and people and we will defend you. But at the end of the day, they did not do that. They, when, you know, push came to shove, they actually let the Jews down very badly. So therefore, it was said that you cannot rely on these people. You cannot rely on the hypocrites. So they, you will find that they will not stand up for you. They're not even loyal to themselves. How can they be loyal to you? So they're in one way, they're going and saying, oh, yeah, we're Muslims. We believe in everything. And then on the other side, they're coming siding with you guys. If they're not loyal to themselves, how are they going to be loyal to you? And this is one of the things about the hypocrites is that you think that they, they, they're they going to uh, they're gonna defend you. That they're going to stand up for you. They can't even stand up for themselves. They said that they would um, stand up for you. But what they say and what they do is two different things. And when we die, we are going to be asked about what we did. We are going to be asked about what sort of lives we led. We are going to be asked about what actions that we committed. We will be asked about what um, we earned, how we earned it, how we spent it how did we spend our youth because your youth is a very beautiful time it is a time where you think that you can reach up to the skies and bring uh, the sky and bring the stars down and uh, you know do what you like you think you, you you have drive and you do have drive at the time you think you can do anything so your youth is a beautiful time and your youth is even is beautified even more if you spend it in the way of allah so we will be asked about what we did during our during our youth and then we will be asked about our knowledge, that you learned your knowledge. Um, what exactly um, do, did you do with that knowledge? Did you share it? Did you um, act on it? What did you do with that, with that knowledge? So we must be prepared that there, there's, there's going to be questions when we pass away. Like when you go for a job interview, there's questions. So always remember that when you uh, pass away, there's going to be questions that you are going to have to answer because we always try and prepare for every question there is. But if we're going for a driving test, we always prepare. If we're going for a job interview, we always prepare. We want to know what the questions are. We speak to the people who have um, taken those tests before. We generally do a lot of research uh, uh, with regards to this. So just like that, we will be doing, um, we will be um, asked uh, about what we did with our lives. And these are the questions. And we're very, very lucky that these questions are in the Hadith. They are in the Quran. They are explained to us to say that this is what you will be asked. And then we learned that if the Quran was sent down onto a mountain, uh, it would have humbled and it would have come apart. It would have just rent asunder. The mountain would not have been able to... Um, to take the pressure of what was in the Quran and what's in the Quran if it can break a mountain then it can break your ego it can break you it can break your um, uh, uh, cycle of evil so use the Quran to better yourself use the Quran to enhance your personality so don't just sort of like think it's a book I only pull it out when I need to sort of like once in a while once in a blue moon um, when somebody dies or during Ramadan, it's a self-help book. And you know what we're all like about self-help and self-development. This is the best self-help and self-development book. So pull it out, read it, read it in a language that you understand and you will realize how much benefit there is in the Quran for this life and for the life to come. 
because obviously we want to be prepared for everything. We want to be prepared for this life and we want to be prepared for the hereafter. And then we learned some of the most beautiful names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we learned that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has 99 names and whoever learns them will enter Jannah. So our next quest should be to start learning these 99 names. Let's move on to today's session. So today we are going um, to study Surah Muntahana. And it's the, um, the revelation of the first couple of ayahs is regarding a person called Hatib bin Abi Balta. And um, he's the reason why the, the surahs were actually, the first couple of um, surahs of, sorry, ayahs of this surah were revealed. So he was amongst the early immigrants and he participated in the Battle of Badr. He had children and wealth in Mecca but he was not from the tribe of Quraysh. So, and he was a, um, uh, an ally of uh, Uthman. So we see that after the Treaty of Hudabiyah, very soon the Mushrikeen violated that treaty by helping and financing their allies against the, the allies of the Muslims. So the Prophet Wasallam demanded compensation and termination of their allies, alliances, or else they should consider the treaty to be finished. The Mushrikeen did not comply, so the Prophet ﷺ prepared a launch and uh, to launch an offensive uh, in order to take over Makkah. But this was meant to be a secret. It was meant to be a secret to avoid any resistance, so resistance on the part of the people of Makkah. And why was that? It was because so that there would be no bloodshed in the land. But one companion, the companion that we've just men mentioned, Hatib ibn Balta. What he did is that he sent a letter secretly to the people of Makkah with this information, with the information of what was uh, uh, what the Prophet Wasallam and the Muslims were planning. So why did he do this? He did this in order to do a favour to the people of Makkah. So in exchange of that favour, they would protect his family who was still in Makkah. Now, <clears throat> He did this while knowing that Allah will certainly grant victory to the Prophet ﷺ, but he just wanted to ensure the safety of his family. So it just goes to show what sort of things that we do in order to protect our family or in order to police our family. But this was giving preference to one's own personal benefit over the benefit of the religion. So Allah reveals these verses. When a hadith um, in Imam Ahmed recorded um, the hadith that Ali radiallahu anha was sent by um, uh, Allah's messenger saying proceed until you reach Wawdak Kahak where there is a lady carrying the letter take the letter from her so this uh, um, um, uh, this person he gave the letter to this lady to um, give to the people of Makkah so um, they proceeded went on their way with their horses galloping until, until they reached the Rolda, where we found the lady and said to her, take out the letter. She said, I am not carrying any letter. And uh, uh, she, uh, we said to her, take out the letter or else. She took out the letter from her braids, so she had it plaited in her hair. And we brought the letter to the Prophet The letter was addressed from uh, Hatib bin Abu uh, Balta, to some of the pagans of Mecca, telling them about Allah's messenger's intent, you know, what he had intended to do. Allah's messenger said, oh, um, Hatib, what is this? Hatib said, replied, oh, Allah's messenger, do not make a hasty decision about me. I was a person belonging, uh, I was a person not belonging to the Quraysh. So all the immigrants who were, uh, uh, who were with you, they have kinship in Makkah, who can protect their families. So they have families still in Makkah and they will protect their families. So uh, their relatives will protect them. But my family does, do not have relatives there. So I did this because I had no blood relations in Makkah. I did not do this out of disbelief. I did it so they would protect my, my, my family. And I did not want to uh, betray my religion, nor did I choose disbelief after Islam. Allah's messenger regarding him said to the companions, he has told you the, the truth. Umar said, 
O oh, Allah's Messenger, allow me to chop off the head of this hypocrite. So uh, Umar is getting really angry and saying, he's done this, let's, let's chop off his head. The Prophet wasallam said, he attended Badr. What can I tell you? Perhaps Allah looked at those who attended um, Badr and said, O oh, people of Badr, do what you like, for I have forgiven you. So we see that the letter never made it to Makkah. It was intercepted. And these verses were revealed that believers, you know, look at who you have as your friends. Look at the standard of your friendship. Look at the standard of your love. Who is it that you should be befriending? And this actually, it's asking us a question as well, that who is it that we are befriending? Look at the people that we are uh, we are friends with, uh, with. Are they opposing Islam? Or, you know, very silently, are they opposing Islam? So it, the surah actually begins with these, um, with these ayahs. So let's begin. Surat al-Muntahana, the woman to be examined. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. O oh, you who believe, take not my enemies and your enemies as friends, showing affections towards them while they have disbelieved in what has come to you of the truth and have driven out the messenger and yourselves from your homelands because you believe in Allah and your uh, you believe in Allah your lord if you have come forth to strive in my cause and to seek my uh, to seek my good pleasure you show friendship to them in secret while i am aware of what you conceal and what you reveal and whosoever of you does that then indeed he has gone far astray from the straight path should they gain the upper hand over you, they would behave to you as enemies and stretch forth their hands and their tongues against you with evil. And they desire that you should disbelieve. Neither your relatives nor your children will benefit you on the day of resurrection against Allah. He will judge between you and Allah is all seer of what you do. So this is indicating that you will all stand alone. Remember that family, um, Sometimes it's because of the family that we disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We earn unlawful wealth. We do things that are uh, impermissible. Sometimes these very people, they will be the ones that will drop us, um, uh, drop us in it. And we take bribes for them. We deal in interest for them. We do all of these things. Why? For our children. And this is not going to help us. This emotional, you know, this getting too emotional about things. This is not going to help. And these children, they will never never help you. And nor will your relatives. Remember that there is no disobedience to the creator by obeying the creation. Meaning that just because someone is related to you in a certain way, it doesn't mean that you have to obey that person and disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you should not obey the creation by disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you have to obey the creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, over the creation. So if uh, if there's something that does not sit well with the family, but Allah has allowed it, or Allah has um, recommended it, or Allah has uh, um, uh, sort of like made it a uh, burden upon you, then you must be doing that. You should not be um, thinking, oh, but my family doesn't do these sort of things. Oh, but my children said, oh, but my mother says, obedience to Allah is what we should uh, you know what is our aim not obedience to the creation we learn uh, that the Prophet وسلم, he would call each of his relatives by their names and he would say to them take whatever you want from me today because I will not be able to help you tomorrow and remember even the prophets of Allah will not be able to help their families on the day of judgment so when we're told that so and so will help you or so and so will help you then know that even the prophets will not be able to help the families if those families were not upon the truth, if they were not upon Islam. So we have to do our part. Abu Harira reported that the Prophet wasallam said, a person will meet his father on the day of judgment and he will say, oh my father, what kind of son was I? His father will say, you were an excellent son. So the son will say, come with me, come with me. So the son will hold on, um, hold on to him and they will go together towards a great gathering. And then eventually that son will be allowed to enter paradise. So when he is entering paradise, he will say, oh, my Lord, my father as well, because it is your promise that you will not humiliate me on the day of judgment. 
So you know where this is headed, you know this is indicating, um, uh, speaking of Ibrahim Islam. So Allah will cause his father to be transformed into something else. And he will fall into hell like that. And Allah will say to, uh, to, uh, say to that, Oh my slave, is this really your father? And Ibrahim salam will say, By your honour, my lord, this is not my father. So our relationship will not benefit us on the day of judgment if we do not believe and do good, uh, good ourselves. And if we do not stay away from sin ourselves, and who are we mainly responsible for? We are responsible for ourselves. Of course, we you know advise and we um, uh, sort of like try and um, teach our families and our children and our uh, wider network. But at the end of the day, you will be responsible for yourself. Ayah number four. Indeed, there has been an excellent example for you in Ibrahim and those with him when they said to their people, Verily, we are free from you and whatever you worship besides Allah. We have rejected you and there has, be, uh, there has appeared between us and you hostility and hatred forever until you believe in Allah alone. Accept the saying of Ibrahim to his father, Verily, I will ask forgiveness from Allah for you. But I have no power to do anything for you before Allah. Our Lord, in you alone we put our trust and to you alone we turn in repentance and to you alone is our final return so Ibrahim salam's prayer to uh, to Allah for his father and this was a promise that he made to his father when Ibrahim um, peace be upon him became sure that his father was an enemy of Allah then he declared himself innocent of him and some of the believers at the time, even at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu they used to ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to forgive their parents who were disbelievers. So they used to invoke Allah uh, for their parents who were disbelievers, begging him to forgive them. They did so, they did this because they said that Ibrahim salam used to invoke Allah to, um, to forgive his father. And Allah the Exalted said in a reply, and this is uh, for, from the Quran, we've uh, done this in the past, that it is not for the Prophet and those who believe in us, uh, believe to ask Allah for forgiveness for the idolaters, even though they may be of kinship. After it has been, uh, become clear to them that they are the dwellers of the fire, and they would be dwellers of the fire because they actually um, died in a state of disbelief. And Ibrahim's request for his father's forgiveness was only because of a promise he made to him. So a promise that he made to his father. But when it became clear to him that he was an enemy of Allah, he disassociated himself from him. Ayah number five. Our Lord, make us not a trial for the disbelievers. Yeah. Our Lord, make us not a trial for the disbelievers and forgive us. Our Lord, verily you, only you are the Almighty, the All-Wise. Certainly there has been in them an excellent example for you to follow. For those who took look forward to the meeting with their Lord and the last day, and whosoever turns away, then verily Allah is the rich, free of all needs, and worthy of all praise. Perhaps Allah will make friendship between you and those whom you hold as enemies. And Allah has power over all things, and Allah is of forgiving, most merciful. Allah does not forbid you to deal justly and kind. Allah does not forbid you to deal just, uh, justly and kindly with those who fought not against you on account of your religion, nor drove you out of your homes. Verily, Allah loves those who deal with equity. With equity. It is only as regard those who fought against you on account of religion and have been driven uh, and have driven you out of your homes and helped you to drive and help to drive you out that Allah forbids you to befriend them and whosoever will befriend them then they are of the wrongdoers so we see here that there are three types of people that this speaks about it's first of all it speaks about the believers so any person who believes that he should love them for the sake of Allah um, whether they are white black you know whatever race whatever ethnicity whatever social status they are, that they are that we love them because they believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so our love for them is because of the fact that they are Muslims now secondly there are disbelievers who oppose you who hate you so what do you do to them you obviously you you um, have a dislike for them as well but and um 
and you're not deceived by them, meaning that you must be cautious and careful and defend yourself. But that's, that does not mean that you go out of your way to be horrible to them or to be mean to them or to do uh, you know, more harm to them than they, uh, uh, th th they do to you. And the third is those who are non-Muslims and they live in peace with you. They don't bother you, you don't bother them. They don't oppose you, you don't oppose them. So you should be with them likewise. So they are kind and gentle and you are kind and gentle. And waging war against them for no reason is something that is foolish to do. Because especially when they have cooperated with you and sheltered you and not expelled you and you should be fair with them and should return their favour to them. Because you often have people who may not be Muslims but they're very kind and they're very nice to you. You be kind and nice to them as well. Like if you've got a neighbour and they send food over, then you send food over and you, they send you a present and you send them a present. So it's not that you cannot be kind and gentle to, to, to um, people who are, of, uh, who are not um, of the Muslim faith. Oh, you who believe, when believing women come to you as immigrants, um, examine them. Allah knows best as to their faith. Then if you ascertain that they are true believers, send them not back to the disbelievers. They are not lawful wives for the disbelievers, nor are the disbelievers lawful husbands for them. But give them, the disbelievers, the amount of money which they have spent as their mahar on them. And there will be no sin on you to marry them if, they, if you have paid their mahar to them. Likewise, hold not the disbelieving women as wives and ask for the return of that which you have spent as mahar and let them the disbelievers ask back for that which they have spent that is the judgment of allah he judges between you and allah is all knowing all wise so because of the treaty of uh, hudabiyah the there was a lot of women that um started migrating to medina so it is said that examine them just you know check that um have they really come for the sake of islam or are they just trying to escape their husbands and their marriages and just looking for adventure and just, you know, seeing if, you know, what things are like around here? Meaning test them and see if that is the reason why they have come. So Allah is most knowing as to their faith. So what they conceal, you, you won't know. Only Allah knows. You just have to go with the apparent. So you just see the apparent as Allah is the heart, uh, the judge of the hearts. And if you know them to be believers, then do not return to them to the disbelievers because the disbelievers are not lawful for them now. So if you, as a, for a Muslim person, if they are married to a non-believer, then that's not permissible for them if they're married to a disbeliever. So they, they were not to be returned. By number 11, and if any of your wives have gone from you to the disbelievers, then pray from uh, then pray from that booty to those whose wives have gone to uh, to the equivalent of what they have spent on their mahar and fear Allah in whom you believe. O Prophet, when believing women come to you to give you the bayah, the pledge that they will not associate anything in worship with Allah, and they will not steal, and that they will not commit illegal sexual intercourse, and they will not kill their children, and that they will not utter slander, intentionally forging falsehood and that they will not disobey you in Maruf, then accept their bayya, accept their pledge, and ask Allah to forgive them. Verily, Allah is of forgiving, most merciful. So we see um, the Prophet wasallam. he would take the pledge uh, of allegiance from the people who came to Medina. And the people would promise him in the name of Allah that they would do such a thing and such a thing, and they will worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And they would refrain refrain from certain things and they would not steal they would not commit illegal sexual intercourse not kill their children not utter slander and so they they would they would say that this this is how we are going to be and the prophet وسلم, when he took the pledge from these uh, the women he did not actually touch their hand he did not um he, he did not put their hand in the, the, his hand and not, took the pledge he just took it verbally and he would never put his hand on uh, in the hands of another woman unless she was a maharam. So these women, they would come and they would give their pledge and they would join the uh, jo jo join them as Muslims. O oh, you who believe, take not as friends the people who incurred the wrath of Allah. 
Surely they have despaired of the hereafter, just as the disbelievers have despaired of those buried in their graves. Now, just like the beginning of the surah, it is um, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbids taking disbelievers as protecting friends. As we did at the beginning, so it's exactly the same at the end, that the surah that, you know, um, because the disbelievers, they have despaired. Now, there's a couple of things that are, you know, um, it is um, said that this is the meaning of that, that they have despaired over those buried in their graves. So first, despaired from ever meeting their relatives again. Those people um, uh, who are dead and gone, they believe that they will never see them again because they don't believe in resurrection. They don't believe in Jannah. They don't believe in uh, the hellfire. They don't believe that there will be a judgment day where everybody will see and know everybody and people will know each other in, in the hereafter as well. They don't believe in it, so they have despaired. So they have no hope that they will be meeting each other again according to their own creed. So because they do not believe in it, so you know nobody else has said that to them, it's their own choice. Secondly, just as the disbelievers who are buried in their graves have lost hope in receiving any kind of goodness. So now that they are in their graves and we all know that once a person passes away, they will see the reality, they will see you know glimpses of the hereafter they will see that there is a hereafter they will see that there is um, um god they will see the angels they will they will see the angels the minute that their soul is uh, uh, going to be removed so they are now well aware of the hereafter but because um they are there because of the standard of their love and friendship uh, that they had in this dunya and they did not believe then they have lost hope so the standard of love and friendship is given over here uh, and the reason being is because your uh, friends influence your choices. So if you befriend and sympathize with the people who oppose your deen, then you will become like them. And if you befriend and sympathize with the people who are in the deen, who are um, uh, sort of like helping the deen to move forward, then you will also uh, become a like them so you have to choose which it is which party it is that you want to join with now surah number so we've done the last surah but we'll do it again oh you who believe take not as friends the people who incurred the wrath of allah they have despaired in the hereafter just as the disbelievers has despaired of those in buried in their graves so now we begin Surah As-Saf, the rows or, or, or the ranks. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful, whosoever is in the heavens and whosoever is in the earth glorifies Allah and he is the almighty, the all wise. So again, the tasbih is mentioned here. Again, it is mentioned here that whoever is, whatever is on the heavens or whatever is in the earth, everything glorifies Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what we should we be doing? We should be doing the same. And we did this in the last, uh, last week we did this we're doing this this week we have done this most weeks that what is our role what should we be doing we should be glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a man came to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he said ya rasulullah i am not able to learn the quran i'm not able to learn anything from the quran and of course this happens to people sometimes they can't learn the quran for whatever reason they have you know they don't find the opportunity they don't feel they don't have time or wh whatever it is they they've not managed to do it so this person is saying that because i haven't done that i don't think i'm able to do this i don't think i will do this what should i do what else can i do and um the Prophet وسلم, said, Say, Subhanallah, Walla ilaha illallah, Walla hu akbar, La hola walla huwata illa billa. So say, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Walla ilaha illallah, Walla hu akbar, La hola walla huwata illa billa. So any time you are not able to recite the Quran, you are not able to, for whatever reason, because you have to look at it when you recite it, and therefore. Um, you can't do that, you're too busy, you haven't got the Quran in front of you, uh, you're traveling, you're living away, whatever reasons, then say this tasbih, say this, say subhanallah, alhamdulillah, 
And these can be said on their own as well. So la subhanallah and alhamdulillah. La ilaha illallah wallahu akbar. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. So you can say these individually as well. So any time you feel that uh, you 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 are unable to recite the Quran, then recite the tasbih, recite these uh, the, these words. Ayah number two. Oh, you who believe, why do you say that which you do not do? Most hateful it is with Allah that you say that which you do not do. So this is another thing that why is it that your words contradict your uh, your actions? Why is it that you don't practice what you preach? This is a severe reprimand to all believers. Every person needs to think about themselves. That there, you know, there are times when I advise people, and you know, they will do the good, but I myself may not, you know, probably will not do the good. And this is something that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala detests. We can't tell other people to read the Quran, be good to their brothers and sisters, to look after their parents, to do all the good deeds to spend in charity and yet we don't do it ourselves so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala detests this so when you preach something you must practice it yourself as well you must practice it practice it because people who don't practice what they preach then this is a sign that you are not worthy of being the heirs to the prophet the prophet mentioned that they came after the righteous and unworthy generation they would preach what they would not practice themselves. So this is something that is severely disliked by Allah. We see that when a person behaves like this, then there is severe punishment for them as well in the hereafter. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned that he was shown people whose lips were being cut with scissors of fire. And when he asked, you know, who were these people? That why is this happening to them? He was told that these are people who do different to what they say. So they say one thing, but they do something different. That meaning that their words contradict their own actions. So they will go and tell people to do this, do the other, be good, but they will never do it, them, do it themselves. In another hadith, we learn that a man will be brought on the day of judgment and he will be thrown into the fire of hell. And his, uh, his intestines will come out. And he will go around the hellfire like a donkey goes around a millstone. And he'll be going round and round in the hellfire with, you know, his um, intestines trailing right behind him. So the people of uh, hell will gather around him and they will say, oh, so and so, what is wrong with you? Didn't you used to order us to do good and order us to for, um, stay away from evil? And he will reply, yes, I used to order you to do good but I did not do good myself. And I used to order you to, uh, I used to forbid you to do evil, yet I used to do it myself. So it's very important that we share our good knowledge with other people, yes, that's fine, but make sure that you practice it yourself as well. Don't just focus on sharing and forwarding because often we, we, we see a hadith or we see a Quran quote and we think quickly, send it to all my friends, I'll get a reward. But are we actually practicing it? Do we actually practice anything that we are forwarding do we practice what we are actually learning ourselves first learn it practice it and then forward it to others so don't focus on preaching 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 sharing 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 also think about your own personal share what did you actually get out of it whatever you are forwarding have you actually in a couple of days you probably won't even remember what you're forwarding but have if you um implement it yourself then you will be in a good position of forwarding it as well. Ayah number four. Verily, Allah loves those who fight in his cause in rows as if they were a solid structure. So here we learn two very important things. One is that Allah does not like um, people. One, uh, one is what Allah does not like people to do. And the other is what Allah does like people to do. So what does Allah not like people to do? that they advise others but forget to do this themselves and what does Allah like for people to do that they stand together in rows that they stand firm in rows they join together and they join together in the cause of Allah they unite together in the cause of Allah and when they are united when they are uh, you know together this this will make them stronger 
when you're together, you are automatically stronger. And then we see that the Saf is especially praised here, the Rose. And when people who are working um, together, they're, they're working very hard, they're very disciplined, they're organized, they're united. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. And we see that even the angels form Safs, form rows. And the birds as well, they're mentioned in the Quran that they form rows. And on the day of judgment, it is also mentioned that people will be in rows. The fact that people will enter Jannah in rows together. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes the, 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 the Saf. And this actually is something that when we go to the masjid and we're standing in a, um, in a row, in a saf, then make sure that our safs are neat and tidy and we are all stood very, uh, you know, together very firmly and very straight. Eye number five. And remember when Moses said to his people, Oh my people, why do you annoy me? While well, you know, certainly I am the messenger of Allah to you. So when they turned away from the path of Allah, Allah turned their hearts away from the right path. And Allah does not guide, and, uh, and Allah guides not the people who are rebellious. And remember when Jesus said to uh, son of Maryam, said, O oh, children of Israel, I am the messenger of Allah to, to you, confirming the Torah. Uh, before me and giving glad tidings of a messenger to come after me whose name shall be Ahmad but when he came to them with the clear proofs they said this is plain magic so this even Jesus mentioned to his people even Isa alayhi salam mentioned to his people the name of the final messenger the name Ahmed was mentioned and Ahmed means the one that was uh, that is praised Muhammad also means uh, is someone who is praised so in their book it is actually mentioned that there will be another prophet another messenger and this is going to be his name but of course because the book has been changed and revised and so on that you know this crucial piece of information has has gone missing somewhere along the line and who does more wrong than the one who invents a lie against Allah while he is being invited to Islam? And Allah guides not the people who are the wrongdoers. They intend to put out the light of Allah with their mouths, but Allah will bring his light to protection, to perfection, even though the disbelievers hate it. So if you think about it, the fire, can a fire ever be put out by blowing, blowing at it with your mouth? Blowing at a fire will only cause it to increase. It will cause it to increase and spread. So there are people who want to extinguish the light of Islam with their mouths, meaning that they go around telling lies, um, insulting, um, um, misrepresenting, uh, misrepresenting the truth. They will distort it. They will, they will never be successful. They can do all they like, but they will not be successful. The fact that people who actually attack Islam, they end up being the very means of spreading Islam. So when they um, people say these things, they think that they're attacking Islam and they're putting it down, but in actual fact, it is being raised even higher and even more people are turning towards it. Ayah number nine, he it is who has sent his messenger with guidance and the religion of truth to make it victorious over the other religions, even though the uh, the, the pagans uh, uh, even though the pagans hate it oh you who believe shall i guide you to a trade that will save you from a painful torment that you believe in allah and his messenger and that you strive hard and fight in the course of allah with your wealth and and your lives and that uh, that will be better for you if you but know so again we are being reminded here to spend in the way of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we see when the person spends in the cause of allah for the religion of Allah, then this is something that will save him from the punishment. It will save him from the punishment of the hellfire and it will protect him. So um, spending in Allah's way is actually a great way of earning yourself Jannah. So always give something on a regular basis because in the Quran, more or less every single week when we do our uh, lessons, every week we come across this, you know, spend, spend in the way of Allah. Because the money that we actually have, um, we may think it's our money, we may think it's um, uh, it's mine, uh, it's mine, mine, mine. 
but at the end of the day it's Allah that gave it to us and Allah can give it to us and Allah can give it to the next person so your money has a share of uh, of you know of for other people in it, in it so anyone that you know that can do with your sadaqah that can do with your regular donations then you should be happy to actually um, uh, uh, give them um, from from what Allah has given you Ayah number 12. If you do so, he will forgive you your sins and admit you into gardens under which rivers flow and pleasant dwellings in Eden. Um, uh, that is indeed a great success. And also he will give you another blessing, which you love, help from Allah against your enemies and a near victory and glad tidings to the believers. O oh, you who believe, be the helpers of Allah, and uh, as said Jesus, son of Mary, to the, uh, to the disciples who are she said to the disciples who are my helpers in the cause of Allah the disciples said we are Allah's helpers then a group of the children of Israel believed and a group disbelieved so we gave power to those who believed against their enemies and they became the victorious so here we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not need our help um, we are actually being honoured here to um, be part of uh, giving dawah, to be given a chance to serve uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's deen, to be given the opportunity to serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's deen. So if we think that, you know, Allah needs our help, then that is a very foolish way of uh, lo looking at it. We should think of it as a opportunity, as an honor, that we are being given this chance to forward the deen, to promote the deen, to bring forward what we have to support the deen and to support the religion. So this is a privilege for us that we not only support ourselves, but we support the deen as well. That we do something for the deen. Whatever we can do, then we do that. So history is proof that those who respond to Allah's cause, who obey Allah, who strive in the way of Allah, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants them success. And if we look at the, the last verse where it speaks about the disciples, they, there was only 12 of them. There were only 12 disciples. And one of them actually betrayed um, um, Jesus, uh, peace be upon him. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the message was spread from these 12 people. If you look at the religion of Christianity, look how big it is. And the religion, um, it, it spread but, uh, uh, with these 12 people until the time of Prophet Sallallahu There were Christians, there were uh, people who believed in Isa, who were the original Christians. They worshipped Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala alone. They did not, you know, they didn't believe in the Trinity and uh, they didn't believe, you know, um, uh, uh, God, uh, Jesus was the son of God and so on. They worshipped Allah only alone they worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and Salman al-Farsi was one of them so the people who believed in Isa they did not commit to shirk that shirk came much much later so we see that success is from Allah it is not because of our resources because of our numbers because of the amount of people that we have it is something that comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so these 12 people they took this religion out and look how big um, Christianity is or was at the time. So we should never belittle that you know, you know, what can I do? I can only do this, I can only do the other. Whatever you can do, you make sure that you put your, your yourself forward to that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will increase it and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you for it. Okay, now let's quickly do a summary of what we have learned. So it's always a good idea to summarize your uh, learning because then, uh, you know, when we um, read and we, uh, um, sort of like read the hadiths and so on, we're looking at it in a different way. And then when we summarize it, it's more brief and sometimes it makes more, more sense as well. And so we, um, when I say it makes more sense, I mean in, this, in the sense that we, we've read it in, uh, in its proper form. And then summarizing it makes it a little bit more easier to understand. So we learned that those who believe do not take Allah's enemies as your friends. 
because they are actively trying to oppose Islam. So if they're actively trying to oppose Islam, then they are not your friends. They are not friends of Allah and they're not your friends. So follow the excellent example of Ibrahim because he came out of his comfort zone. He came out of his comfort zone to protect his religion. He came out of his comfort zone to protect his faith. And he challenged his uh, family, he challenged his father, he challenged his people, even though there was many of them and him on his own, but he still was not afraid of speaking the truth. So we, we, you know, we must stand firm as well in what we believe. Never will your relatives or your children benefit you if they are not upon the deen. So if they are uh, asking you to do what is wrong, if they are um, asking you to um, indulge in um, sinful activities, then they, and you're doing it because it's family, it's your children, what can you do? You know, nothing is better than your own children, my children this, my children that. They, they won't benefit you in the hereafter. So on the day of resurrection, Allah will judge you. So you will be responsible for yourself. So don't sort of think that, you know, I'll get away with it for, you know, because I'm a mother, you know, a mother's love and so on. You will be judged yourself. You'll be on your own. No one will be there to protect you. And make dua and do not become a fitna for your family. And do not let your family become a fitna for you. So this is where we need to make lots of dua. That Allah make us good Muslims, make our, our families good Muslims. And our progeny to come till the day of a judgment. Make them all good Muslims till the day of Qiyamah. Because, you, you know, as families you find that, okay, I suppose in our parents' generation, we were all living in countries where everybody was Muslim. That's fine. You know, we just assume that our children too will be Muslims. But when you're living in a country where not everybody is Muslim, you choose, you know, if you choose to practice your faith, good and well. But if you don't choose to practice your faith, that's good and well as well. So your children may not practice Islam, may not, you know, be uh, firm uh, with, with um, you know, may not follow Islam. So make dua that you, your progeny to come until the day of resurrection are all upon Islam and uh, that they do not become a fitna for you and you do not become a fitna for them. And we learned that believing women, when they come to you, um, check to see that they are actually coming for the sake of Islam and not just because they're trying to escape their marriage. And this was um, uh, regarding the women that left Mecca uh, after the Treaty of Hudabiyah. So Allah can put the love of Islam in anyone's heart. So don't think that just because someone's not listening to you right now or uh, is not following Islam right now that they will never follow Islam. They may just need that one other person to tell them this. They may just need one more hadith to, to, to sort of like bring them on the straight path. And they will need your dua as well. So make dua for whoever it is that you, you want to, uh, 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 them to come to Islam. Make dua for them and keep, you know, reminding them. Don't think that, you know, you're there to make them Muslim. They will be a Muslim if they want to be a Muslim. Your part is just to convey the message. And don't give up. Just keep telling them about the good things. And when... Um, the believing women came to the Prophet وسلم, and the Prophet وسلم, took the bayna from them and they were to um, they were told that they um, they were they actually said that they will not associate anything with Allah so these were the terms and conditions not not to associate anything with Allah nor will they steal nor will they commit unlawful sexual intercourse nor will they kill, uh, they kill their children, nor will they bring forth a slander, nor will they disobey you in what is right. And then if they choose to sort of like go along with all of those, then accept their pledge and ask forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for them. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is forgiving and merciful. Um, then in Surah Saf, we learn that whatever is in the heaven and in the earth, all glorifies Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And of course, our role too is to glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And great is um, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala detests that you should say what you do not do. 
that uh, um, that you um, tell other people to do what you do not do. That's in terms of good. So why do you say to others to do what you do not do yourself? So if you're preaching to others, you know, read your um, pray your salah, pray your salah, and you're not praying your salah. Oh, you know, you must fast, you must fast, and you're not fasting yourself. You must be good to your parents, you must be good to your parents, and you're not good to your parents yourself. Why do you say things that you do not, that you yourself do not do? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hates this. It is great hatred in the sight of Allah for that which you say, but you do not do. So, um, so that's something that we really need to work on ourselves with. Then um, Isa, the son of Mar Maryam, said, O children of Israel, indeed, I am a messenger of Allah to you. So he's confirming the fact that he is a messenger from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not that I am a son of uh, the son of Allah, but I am a messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he's confirming what came before, which was the Torah, and then giving glad tidings of a messenger to come afterwards, whose name will be Ahmed. And that's the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So in the Bible, in the Injil, in the original uh, um, um, Bible, in the original Injil, it actually says that I am the messenger of Allah and the, 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 the messenger, um, the next messenger to come is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned by the name Ahmed. And those who want to um, extinguish the light of Islam with their mouths will never be able to do so. How can they do that? You, you can't just uh, knock something and expect it to go down when it is the truth. The truth only rises, it doesn't go down. And we are reminded to spend in the way of Allah. We are reminded to spend in the way of Allah more or less every week. That what, whatever you have, we are also reminded that whatever you have is from Allah. So it's not whatever you have, it's because you are you know, good with your money, you know how to earn, you know, um you know you, you've you're qualified so therefore you're a higher no it is from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah can give to who he wants and allah does not need your help allah does not need you he is actually just giving you the honor giving you the chance giving you the opportunity to serve his deen to bring forward what what we have to support the religion and this is a privilege for us rather than thinking that, oh, why do I have to do this? And uh, the, and the um, surah about uh, the ayah about, the, um, about Isa alayhi salam saying to, the, uh, saying to the people that who is going to um, support the cause of Allah? And the Huwariyin, the, um, the disciples, they said that we will. And there was only 12 of them. Alhamdulillah, only 12 people, and look at how big the religion became. Of course, you know, the shirk entered it much, much later, but it was the biggest religion of the time. And they were upon Tawheed, they were upon Islam. So that is the <coughs> end of our session. So what we'll do is we'll say goodbye to our Facebook friends. And we will continue with our questions and answers for our um, uh, for our um, Zoom uh, supporters. So